This week on What's Good Cape Cod, it's all about the 4th of July. We honor one of our favorite veterans, all of the things you can do this 4th of July, and our favorite sandy spot to see the fireworks. I'm Sarah Lapsey Martin. And I'm Katie Clancy. Welcome back to What's Good Cape Cod, where we show you Cape Cod through the eyes of a couple of locals. Every Tuesday, we drop a new video that tells you about a person, place, and thing we think you should know about. Yes, and so our person this week is someone we have actually mentioned before and is worthy of mentioning again. And it, this this person is actually a personal friend of yours, yes. right, Sarah? Yes, he's like a friend kind of family member. So favorite veteran for sure that when we thought about who should we feature, we have to feature Freeman Johnson. So known as Freeman or Mr. J, he turned 101 this past March 11th, which oh, is Freeman. amazing. 101. Um, and he's doing great. I mean, he's out and about. He's, he, you wouldn't think he's 101. Um, so he is a survivor of Pearl Harbor. And he, I believe, is the last one in Massachusetts, um, wow. last survivor in Massachusetts. And um, there's not that many left around the country even, you know? <laughs> so very lucky to have him. He is a wash ashore, he says. So he grew up in Waltham off Cape. He was there for 65 years. He had three daughters. Um, after when he retired, he moved to New Hampshire and his wife passed in about 2002. And eventually, you know, his daughter, Diane, who I'm friends with, said he needed to be closer. So he wanted, you know, she wanted him to be closer. So at age 92, he came to live on the Cape with her. And so they own a house in Centerville um, and he loves being on the Cape. So his veteran days, he was in the United States Navy from 1939 to 1945. And his job, he was a machinist mate first class on the USS St. Louis at the time of the Pearl Harbor attack. Um, and the St. Louis was actually the second ship out of the harbor. And because of that, um, they were lucky to get out alive without a scratch. And so the ship was nicknamed the Lucky Lou. Um, you know, and the attack was horrible. I mean, you know, it killed so many people and hundreds of planes were destroyed and a fleet of eight battleships were, were ruined. So they really were lucky. So Lucky Lou, I think, sticks with that. Um, and he truly was there from the beginning. It, so he was there during, you know, during all of that. And then at the end, in September of 1945, he actually got to witness the Japanese surrender in Tokyo Bay. So I thought this was cool. So he was like halfway up on a lookout mast, um, on the Iowa and he could see the treaty like actually being signed on the USS Missouri, which was like a half mile away. Oh, wow. So truly there at the beginning and the end. Um, he there this year is the 80th anniversary. So I've been told they're planning a trip. So a nice family trip to go back and, you know, and honor the 80th anniversary. Um, we, like you said, we have featured him before. So right before the shutdown, he got to be in, he was the grand marshal for the St. Patrick's Day Parade, where they honored the World War II veterans. So he got to, it was March. So it was like right before the shutdown. So it was, like, it was the oh, week before, because I remember we were there together. Yeah, it was the week before. And then it was like, okay, shut down. So that was, a, you know, a really cool thing that he got to do. Um, Freeman, he, he loves red wine. He loves gardening. He loves taking trips to Provincetown and just like seeing the parade, the food, walking around. Um, he's truly just amazing. And I thought this was a funny story that just popped up on my on Diane's uh, Facebook the other day. So they went furniture shopping and they were off Cape. They went to Jordan's furniture. And I guess Freeman was kind of joking about like, was he going to see Elliot, um, the, the Jordan's furniture guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they get there and there's these big stairs and Diane's like, you know, do you want to take the elevator? And Freeman's like, no, we're taking the stairs. Like, that's just how he is. So he starts walking up the stairs and they have to take a little break because they get a little tired and they turn behind him and who's there, but Elliot is standing. No way. It's like, you know, so they were like starstruck. And so my, Diane's telling um, Elliot the whole story about, you know, Freeman's a, a Pearl Harbor survivor. And so by the time they get to the top, they're best friends. He's telling the whole store, um, you know, that Freeman's 101 and just took the stairs and he was like a rock star. So I just love it. It's, it's so fun and it's great to be recognized everywhere and he, and he deserves it. Uh, yeah, that is awesome. And I don't care if we f feature Freeman like next month too. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just love these stories. I'm sure there'll be another story by then. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so the place that uh, we are featuring for our 4th of July edition is many places and it's the places that you can actually go this year because yes. the pandemic restrictions are largely lifted, but it is not 
completely back to normal. I don't think it'll ever be. I think some things have changed probably permanently. We shall see. Yeah. But I wanted to point out, we, we, we did a little bit of research to look at some of our old favorites um, and some of the classic things that have on the Cape to let you know what we know is on what you can do. If there's any, we're not, there's certainly, this won't be an exhaustive list. And if there's anything that you, you're you curious about, you gotta go to the source and check it out. But these are one, two, three, four, five super fun things that we do know about. So the first one is, um, is fireworks and fun at Veterans Field, 15 Veterans Field Road in Chatham on July 1st. There's kids activities from 6.30 to 8.30 while they're sort of getting ready and the sun is setting and all that stuff. Uh, Dan Clark, the singing trooper, will be entertaining from 8 to 9 and then the fireworks go off at 9. That sounds like a blast. I've done that before and it was a really good time. Agreed. Yeah. Um, then on the second, so the first... What day is the first? Is that Thursday? First is Thursday, yeah. Yeah, so that's Thursday. Um, so like fireworks on Thursday night. Then on Friday, By the Bay shows uh, 4th of July Festival of the Arts at Drummer Boy Park. This is in Brewster. Um, best place, like, it's like the place to have like an art show. Agreed. Uh, craft fair kind of place. So Festival of the Arts celebrating its 22nd year, bringing what? Cape Cod artists and craftsmen to the public. Um, and that will be a great place to go buy presents. Actually, I might just go by there. So that's yeah, something. I lo I love going to those shows. You can find so many great things. Yes, yeah, we have a lot of really uh, talented artists around here. Great. Um, and then this is a big one that everybody wants to know about. The Chatham Parade is on. Yeah. It is on. It's on for the third, though. Okay. Yeah. So the Chatham Parade is on for the third at nine thirty in the morning. So you gotta. Get up and at them. Yep. Um, the theme is Chatham from sheltering in place by the sea. <laughs> like <that>. Celebrating <laughs> the beginning. Yeah, so, that's good. Anyway, but so cute and so fun. So the parade is happening. So that's fantastic. We're happy about that. Um, great way to start this Saturday. Then if you have not had enough of parades, the next morning you can travel west and go to the annual Barnstable, West Barnstable Parade at 9.30 also. Um, there's going to be cars, there's going to be floats, there's all sorts of details. You just Google any of this stuff. We don't have exact, you know, website addresses for you. We Googled it. You should be able to do this. I think this is the one I'm going to go to. And I saw that um, on Luke's Love, they were saying that the parade route actually goes by. Oh! Yes, yeah, so on parade route this year, which is pretty cool. So we should go to the playground, hang out, play there. Oh my gosh. We'll be there that for the parade. Oh, yeah. that's brilliant. Oh, I love it. Many birds with one stone. Yes. Um, and also on the fourth, another parade of a different type that has always happened, not always, but is a tradition is back, the Hyannis Marina Boat Parade. So that will start in Hyannis Harbor and the boats uh, will start lining up around one and they, um, they'll they get into the harbor at about two. Now there will be, th the place to go see that is at Asselton Park, where if you've ever gone to a lovely local Hyannis edition, yeah. that is there. Um, and those family activities start at two and go till 6 p.m. there. So that sounds like a blast of a day. Uh, for the fourth. Now, listen, there's going to be a bajillion other things happening in all different towns. We certainly, like I said, don't have everything. Um, but these are some good staples. You could uh, sort of have a good four days in a row right there on the yes. holiday week. Good start. <laughs> yes. And actually, Sarah has, I think, the best idea for what to do on the night of the fourth where the, I think the best place to see the fireworks. Yes. So our thing is Sandy Neck Beach. So I think that this is one of the coolest places to see the fireworks on the 4th. Um, so if you're not familiar with Sandy Neck Beach, it's in Barnstable. It is six miles long, which is a, such a long. That I didn't realize. I knew right? it was long, but six, six miles, miles long. Yeah. Um, and the cool thing about that um, that a lot of people might not know about is that you can drive out on it. So you can get a sticker for your SUV um, or camper. I would love a camper one day to take out there. But you'll see all the campers lined up and you can camp out there for a few days. And then you'll see all the SUVs and, you know, Jeeps and everything lined up. Um, you can have fires out there, which I love. It's just like such a, a, a cool beach scene out there. Yeah. Um, but the cool thing is on the 4th, because you're looking out at Cape Cod Bay, you can see so many different fireworks. So from like so many different towns, whether that's, you know, some person doing their own or a town firework. I just love that you can see them from everywhere across the bay. It's yes, really yes. Yeah. And actually, I'm sure people are doing them in Barnstable Harbor. So that's on the right. other side. So you get that and then you get the bay. Yeah. So 
Then you can get your, yeah. your, your feet in the sand. You can have the water there. You can have your fire and you don't have to drive out. That's the other thing. So there is a parking lot that you can go and park in the parking lot and bring out your beach chair. So it's not just a drive on beach. So yeah. um, everyone, everyone can check it out. I am thinking about it. Actually, that sounds like fun. Um, well, that's all we have for this episode. I'm sure there's more to learn, more to talk about. You know what we would love from you guys too, is if you've got ideas, if you've got places that you're going, things that you're doing that you want us to talk about, or maybe, you know, add in the comments somewhere, please send us your stuff. We're always looking for more. Yes. Comment below of what you're doing on the 4th of July. Yes, absolutely. So now you know what's good Cape Cod. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and also the bell to be notified next time we drop an episode. And if you're looking for more information about anything we talked about, you can go to our website, whatsgoodcc.com, and we'll have links to everything we talked about. Thanks. Bye. Bye, guys.